Heart disease is the number one cause of death in the United States. The National Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute, the NHLBI, which provides leadership for a national program in disease of the heart, blood vessels, lung and blood, blood resources and sleep disorders, funded this project to help African Americans prevent heart disease. This web-based training session being conducted by the project team at Morehouse School of Medicine will help community health workers, CHWs, like you, learn the risk factors for heart disease so that you can help to educate other community health workers and clients. I am also encouraging you to participate with other community health workers in the online discussion forums that will be available in the virtual classroom as well. There are a total of 10 web-based sessions that you will cover during this training. If you are also participating in the learning circle discussions, these sessions will be taught in more detail in the classroom. The sessions are Knowledge is Power, Know Your Risk of Heart Disease, Act in Time to Heart Attack Signs, Get Energized, Say Yes to Physical Activity, Help Your Heart, Control Your High Blood Pressure, Be Heart Smart, Keep Your Cholesterol in Check. Embrace your health. Aim for a healthy weight. Protect your heart. Take good care of your diabetes for life. Make heart healthy eating an everyday family reunion. Eat in a heart healthy way, even when time or money is tight. Take control of your health. Enjoy living smoke free. There are accompanying handouts and picture cards for each session to be used when you are teaching these sessions to other community health workers or clients. Handouts are available at the end of each chapter of your manual. Electronic copies are available by clicking your mouse on each handout title. Hello and welcome to the seventh session of the peer-to-peer -peer training of community health workers to improve heart health project. Protect your heart, take good care of your diabetes for life. By the end of this session, you should know what diabetes is and how it affects the body. The symptoms of diabetes, that diabetes is a major risk factor for heart disease, the levels of blood glucose and what they mean, and how to prevent and control diabetes and the amount of sugar in common beverages. When you are teaching this session, you will be referring to six handouts located at the end of session seven in your manual. What is diabetes on page 234, are you at risk of type 2 diabetes on page 235? Symptoms of diabetes on page 236? Tender care for your feet on page 237? Be smart about your heart. Control the ABCs of diabetes on page 238. And finally, read the food label for sugar on page 239. Pam's food choices on page 240 and 241. Think about your drink hidden sugar in common beverages on page 242. How much sugar and calories are in your favorite drink on page 243? Staying healthy with diabetes, real life stories on page 244 through 246. And soul food makeover, strawberry and pineapple delight recipe on page 247. Electronic copies of handouts are available by clicking your mouse on each handout title on the sidebar located on this page. Diabetes is a very serious problem for African American families. It affects about one in eight adult African Americans and is increasing. Diabetes is a preventable chronic disease that gradually damages many organ systems in the body. Diabetes is a major risk factor for heart disease and the leading cause of death for people with diabetes. About 3 in 10 African Americans aged 35 and older with diabetes also have heart disease. African Americans are more likely to suffer and die from diabetes as compared to their white counterparts. Diabetes occurs when the body does not make enough insulin or cannot use it well causing glucose to build up in the blood. Glucose is a form of sugar, which is why diabetes is also referred to as having sugar. Insulin controls the amount of glucose in your blood and therefore causes glucose to build up in your body and as a result, the body does not function well. Normally, the food you eat goes to the stomach, 
where it is broken down to glucose. Blood glucose is also known as blood sugar. Blood then takes the glucose into the cells of your body, where it is turned into energy needed for daily life. Glucose can't enter the cells by itself. The hormone insulin, which is made in the pancreas, is like a key that helps glucose enter the cells. Diabetes happen when the body does not produce enough insulin or when the cells can't use the insulin well. This means that the glucose then builds up in the blood and a person who have high levels of glucose in their blood have diabetes. Prediabetes is a condition in which glucose in the blood is higher than normal but not high enough to be diabetes. If you have prediabetes, you are more likely to develop diabetes within the next 10 years and are also more likely to suffer a heart attack or stroke. Picture card 7.3 helps to explain that there are two main types of diabetes, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes occurs when the pancreas no longer produces insulin. This is shown on picture card 7.3 on the second picture. This diabetes requires an insulin pump or shots every day. This type of diabetes is typically found in children, adolescents, or young adults. This type of diabetes affects 5 to 10% of all persons with diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is when some insulin is produced by the pancreas, but the body cannot use it well. The third picture of the 7.3 picture card shows this. Type 2 diabetes occurs more often in people who are overweight or physically inactive. Type 2 diabetes can occur at any age, but it is more common in people over the age of 40. But diabetes is increasing among children, especially those who are overweight or African American. Type 2 diabetes affects 90 to 95 percent of people with diabetes. There is a special type of type 2 diabetes called gestational diabetes. Gestational diabetes develops in some pregnant women, but usually disappears after the baby is born. Overweight women and women who have a family history of diabetes are also at a higher risk of gestational diabetes. Women who develop gestational diabetes are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes and children born to women with gestational diabetes are more likely to become overweight and to develop type 2 diabetes. You can determine if an individual is at risk for developing diabetes. Here are some risk factors to help them figure that out. Are they overweight? Are they fairly inactive? Have a parent or sibling with diabetes? Are they African American, Latino, American Indian, Asian American, or Pacific Islander? Have they had gestational diabetes or have given birth to a baby who weighs over nine pounds? Do they have a blood pressure that is 140 over 90 or higher? Or have been told by a healthcare provider that they have high blood pressure? Finally, do they have abnormal cholesterol levels, your LDL too high or your HDL too low? The great news is that most of these risk factors can be prevented or reverse their odds of developing diabetes, like becoming more physically active and losing weight. Let's take some time to go over the symptoms of diabetes. Feeling tired, increased thirst, frequent urination, increased hunger, unexplained weight loss, sores that don't heal, very dry skin, pins and needles in feet, and blurry vision and irritability. In order to determine if you have diabetes or not, you have to take a fasting blood glucose test. Fasting means that you cannot eat 12 hours before the test is given. A fasting blood glucose level below 100 is normal. A fasting blood glucose of 100 to 125 is pre-diabetic and you are at risk for type 2 diabetes and must lose weight and get physically active to reduce that risk. A blood glucose level of 125 is diagnosed as diabetes and you need to work with your doctor to learn to how to control your diabetes. People with diabetes may develop hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is a condition in which a person's blood glucose levels are too low. Hypoglycemia may develop when one skips or delays a meal 
or has not eaten enough, take too much insulin or our diabetes medication, or does too much physical activity or drinks alcohol. The symptoms of hypoglycemia are headache, feeling shaky, anxious, weak, and irritable. To treat hypoglycemia, which is a blood glucose level below 70, you could do one of the following. Drink a half a cup of fruit juice, a cup of milk, or take two to three glucose tablets, or two teaspoons of sugar or honey. The opposite of hypoglycemia is hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia is a condition in which a person's glucose levels are too high. A person may develop hyperglycemia if they eat too much food, are less active than usual, mistaken their medicine, or feel sick, or experience tension and stress. The symptoms of hyperglycemia include increased thirst, frequent urination, dry skin, increased hunger, blurry vision, feeling tired, and nausea. There are many complications that are associated with diabetes. Diabetes may affect large blood vessels in the brain, heart, legs, and feet, and also affect small blood vessels in your kidneys and eyes. Diabetes can lead to a heart attack, stroke, loss of feeling in the feet or legs, amputations of the feet or legs, kidney disease, eye disease, dental problems, and changes in sexual function. Persons with diabetes should know the ABCs. The A1C, which is done by your doctor at least twice per year, should be below seven. The blood pressure should be below 130 over 80, and cholesterol should be below 100. Inform them to be sure to ask your doctor what your ABC's numbers are, what they should be, and what actions you should take to control them. This is an example of Soul Food Makeover, Strawberry Pineapple Delight, a dessert option for those with diabetes. Now that you have completed this session, do you have any questions? Is there any information that is unclear to you or difficult to understand? What information covered in this session do you think community members may have difficulty understanding? Are there any issues particular to women that should be highlighted in this session? What information covered in this session do you think may be a little challenging for you to present? Why? You will have an opportunity to share your responses with other community health workers in your learning circle discussion and on the online discussion forum.